Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. While Facebook is notifying you that we are here, I am going to adjust just a couple things. So, it's always funny. You guys see these videos and you're like, oh, they did so good or they look so good or I don't know how they have the light or they have the stuff in front of them. Listen, I'm literally stacking a box on top of a like old timey candy dish that I got from my Nana and then I'm gonna set my computer up there so that maybe I won't be looking down, down, down as often because I'm just gonna tell you, you guys stuck with me yesterday, but I was like, you were seeing the top of my head a lot. <laughs> and first, let me just say notes are because I value you and your time and because I know that with those uh, notes that we got to write and like that, that was God and I in this conversation and I don't want to uh, get off on my own rabbit trails. <laughs> And take away from what the Spirit of the Lord has for you. So good morning. When you join, tell me what you are doing this morning. If you are, um, if you are, you know, what you're doing. If you're snowed in, that's what I was going to say. I'm also about to oil up and drink some more coffee. The two mindset tools from yesterday's session two. Um, session two. Okay, I'm looking at the paperwork. Uh, we have the moments matter method. This right here, the mindset tool, this was moments matter uh, and, and set intentions. So moments matter slash set intentions. That was just our fun way of saying that we were setting intentions and this is why, because moments matter. Hold on one minute, guys. My charger decided to drop on me when I moved my computer up here. Lots of cords and stuff. All right. Let me turn that volume down a bit for you. Move some stuff out of the way. That way I'm not scrambling and searching. So good morning, good morning. Are you guys, um, we have some people, some neighbors who they told us they are working remotely today because again, we live in Shawnee. And so uh, they were ready and City apparently it has a lot more ice than we do so okay let me know if you guys can hear me well look at this crazy piece of hair right there y'all it's morning time and today is my two-year-old's birthday all right are you guys ready what are you excited about today what are you... that's my two-year-old coming in here with her noise saying I want a kitty cat birthday and um, Susan, if you're still on here, you should be able to watch the replays of yesterday. So you should be able to watch those replays. Okay, cloudy day so far. Oh, Susan, you're so welcome. Yesterday I got to teach my boys what dreary meant because they asked if it was foggy outside, which is so funny because they used to call it froggy. It's like, no, it's dreary. All right, guys, my kids lost my chapstick, so I got some chapped lips right now. Good morning, Summer. Did I remember correctly? Yesterday was your birthday. Did I remember that correctly? Okay, I'm going to give you guys a quick recap because I want to give you an opportunity to comment real quick this morning. If you got to start diving into what we talked about yesterday. So yesterday we covered what empowered motherhood is. Um, our five words that describe our empowered motherhood. Uh, we talked about the kingdom principle is that we live with the Lord in everything that we do. Right? So that um, that is that is what, oh, that's our foundation kingdom principle. But kingdom principles are and I lost my note on it because I didn't write it down, sorry, but they are those spiritual operations that are woven throughout the Bible, right? 
and that phrases like, I'm just going to give it to God or I'll pray about it, that they can either be really empowering or really limiting based upon your position and your belief so that it's really important. We talked about what PAMs are, that they are personal aromatherapy methods, that they are methods that you personalize for your days based upon your needs and that you are to set up three of them throughout your day so that you have anchors for your day, so that you get to make the choice that no matter what has happened, good or bad, this in this part of the day, here is our anchor and we're going to set our intention for this next moment, right? And that leads us to our mindset tool from our session two training yesterday, moments matter. And it is our responsibility to set intentions for those moments. And we went through and I gave you guys the moments matter method and I showed you how to start breaking down your intentions and setting those. So, all right, let's get going and let's jump into day two. Get all these papers organized and put up here, which is why I had them. Okay, that paper goes over there. All right, all right, all right. So I put them up here. Okay, you guys ready? Summer, it was your birthday. Did you have a good day? Did you have a good birthday? All right, so day two, we are talking today. Fix that hair so it doesn't bother me the whole time. We are talking today about awakening to your normal. Awakening to your normal. What does that even mean? Don't you know what your normal is? Why do you need to awaken to it? What will you see if you awaken to it? Aren't you already awake? What is awaken? <laughs> Did I nail down every thought you had going through your mind? You guys, awaken to your normal. Normal does not equal purposed. Normal does not even equal right. Normal does not even equal safe. Let that sink in for a moment. Normal does not always equal perfect. Normal does not always equal right. Normal does not always equal safe. You see, there's a level of safe living, then there is a level of right and wrong living and there is a level of our purpose to living. And so we can live safe and we can have lives that are safe, but they're not living in truth in what is right. And then we can have lives that we're living in truth in what is right, but they're not in what is purposed for our lives. So there are different levels there. And no matter where you find yourself on that level, I just want to encourage you today that you are not alone. You are not the only one who has been where you are. You are not the only one who is currently where you are. And you will not be the last one who is where you are. But there is always a way out because our God is good and he is faithful and he provides a way for us to stand up under everything and he always provides a way out. So let's find our way out this morning. And here's why I say that. Because a lot of times normal, normal is the word that we use. We say, well, this is just normal for us. This is normal for this. This is normal for me in this. This is normal for me to feel this way. This is normal for my family to act this way. This is normal. This is normal. But normal is not our standard. Normal is only what is consistently happening in your life. And even if it's normal for others outside of your life, that's not the measurement in the standard that you hold yourself to. You align yourself with God and what he has for you, and you align yourself with purpose, and purpose is our normal. Purpose is what our goal is to make normal. 
right? So just because it's normal doesn't mean it's right. I was not raised in a Christian home. There are a ton of stories I could tell you about my growing up life. And just like I'm sure you could tell me a bunch of stories about your growing up life, we've all have them. And we all have things that have happened to us and around us and have touched us in one way or another to help shape and mold us. But here's the thing. I remember um, one of the most clarifying things that I remember was was saying oh my goodness people can go every day without telling a lie I didn't realize that was even possible because my normal was surrounded by white lies fibs all of these things that were just a stretch of the truth you know and so I didn't realize that but normal does not equal purpose so our kingdom principle that we are moving into today is seek first, not seek only. That is a fill in. Seek first, not seek only. Why is it my computer? Give you guys a moment, fill that in. Seek first, not seek only. And this comes from Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. You guys, this section, Jesus is encouraging us not to be anxious about our lives, about what we're going to wear or eat or drink, about the worries, about what we're planning, about all of these things, right? The practical ways of living. In this section, Jesus is encouraging us not to worry or be anxious about the practical ways of living. So as we take a moment to dive into today's topic, it's important to take note of this kingdom principle. Seek him first above all else where limiting and and so seek him first above all else where the limiting belief comes into play is when we use the scripture out of context to say that the only things that we should work towards or we should seek are um wrong paper, our, king, our kingdom or spiritual things as if they're separate from the rest of our lives. So I'm gonna give you just a moment and then you just put on your hard toe boots, your steel toe boots, because we may have a little toe stepping to do. <laughs> like I said, I stick to these notes because there are so many times that I'm like, God, I don't want to say this. And you can ask uh, my clients who have worked with me one-on-one. -on -one. We'll have our coaching calls and our sessions, and, and they'll uh, be letting out some of these things. And as they're letting out, like I hear the Spirit inside of me and speaking to me and, and, and prompting me to say this. And while the, I'm still listening to my clients, I'm also having this conversation with the Lord. I'm like, no, God. Mm -mm. I don't want to say that. You got it. You got it. Fit. You got it. Just do something else. And it's just there. And so oftentimes I go, okay, you know, I love you, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know you love me. Okay. And you know that what I'm about to say, I'm saying in love. And the only reason I'm saying this right now is because I feel so strongly in my spirit to say it because I don't want to say this. So please listen with spirit ears. And that happens several times uh, throughout these sessions that we have. And um, it's so funny because most of the time they're like, oh yeah, that's exactly it. So that's how I feel right now. Um, because, you know, here we go. We, we have these things in our, in our uh, religious world that are our sacred cows. Right, you guys remember when the uh, Israelites were in in the desert? They had uh, gotten delivered from Egypt. They're in the desert. Um, Moses went up to meet God on Mount Sinai because they were like, "No, you got to go for us. We can't go talk to God." Right, and so because God brought them into the desert, guys. Here, let's just foundation principle: of living with God. God delivered them, brought them through into this desert place. Was it that long of a journey in between point A and point B, right, to the promised land? But in this middle here, the Lord wanted to have communion with them again and be with his people again. And they were like, no, we can't do that. We've got to send us a prophet. 
right? So that's how all that got started. So Moses is up on Mount Sinai and he's uh, hearing from God. And, and uh, he, they, then in the middle of this, they, there's this conversation and God's like, look what these people are doing again. They're down there making a golden calf. Well, I love that uh, Moses, he gets like this holy anger in him. And he goes down and he burns it and then makes these people drink the ashes. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, you're, you're so funny. Okay, sorry. There's a little piece of my, um, I don't know if that's a sick sense of humor or not, but I just, I find that super funny. So we have these sacred cows in our life. Things like seek only the kingdom of God, right? Let me read them off of here so I can read them better. They're on your guidebook. Seek only the kingdom of God and then settle comfortably into wishing and hoping that things would be better. Ugh, stupid sin. Nothing. There's nothing we can do now. There's nothing we can do. Right? So that's a sacred cow. Like we're just, we're going to seek the kingdom of God and then he'll just take care of everything. And there's nothing we can do because we're just sinful by nature and we're just sinful people. That's a sacred cow. Another sacred cow is we're going to seeking only for spiritual things, abstract things that we can't see or touch or feel. We're going to seek for those things because there's no point in seeking for practical things for our everyday life because, you know, God is a spiritual God. Another sacred cow we have are that spiritual things that are abstract and separate. They're, they're separate from the rest of our concrete lives. They're, they're different. They're not the same. And so we can seek only God and all his goodness and then try to just figure it out over here. And it's like we're just running in circles, spinning our wheels all the time, not really moving forward. The whole dance of one step forward and two steps back. Well, mama, today is the day. You're done dancing. You're done doing that dance anyways. My good old southern dialect. I forget that some of you guys aren't from around here. You're north, northerners. And so I might need to make sure that I'm saying phrases that are universal. <laughs> so those are sacred cows. Okay, those are sacred cows. Those are not things that the, that the Lord has for you. Well, here is the thing. We're going to bust some of those up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to throw those little golden cows into the fire. And we're going to have to just swallow some ashes real quick. All right. This, these are little belief busters. Okay. Our spiritual life and our fleshly life are housed in the same. We are one body. Go and read in Galatians 5. I'm going to give you a little bit of scripture. You can just write those down by the sacred cow that it goes with so that you can go and burn that idol, okay? So Galatians 5, our spirit life and our flesh life are the same, okay? And don't get like all like nitpicky with me about, oh, well, you're supposed to like feed your spirit and starve your flesh and all of this stuff and we die to our flesh. Well, here's the thing. Once we die to something, it is gone. We die to our flesh. We have been crucified in the flesh and resurrected in the spirit. Okay? So don't start like nitpicking and trying to pull apart. We are a whole person. We live in this world, not of this world, but we are to be light and salt in the world that we live in. And we can't do that if we're saying, oh, well, we got a spirit life over here and a flesh life over here. They are the same. Okay? Galatians 5. Here is our next one. Our next little belief buster is found in John 3, 6 through 8. We are a spiritual being. Abstract is concrete for us. We are a spiritual being. We are a flesh being, but we are a spiritual being. And what is abstract is concrete for us. All right, James 2, 16. Here's our last little uh, belief buster. You can be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly good. We have to put our faith and our deeds together. Okay, we have to put our faith and our deeds together. The foundation is the same. We are living with God in all things. All right, you got that? Are we good? Like, let's take a moment 
Tell me if you're good. Tell me if you're still here. Are we good? You got it? You're like, all right, I'm gonna go chew on that kingdom principle. Give me a I'm here or I'm good or let's go in the comments. Yes, I'm drinking water and coffee. <laughs> All right, happy mom hack. We're on our 20 minute time marker. So our happy mom hack is rhythm refinement. Rhythm refinement. So this is how, when we take those con or those those abstract things, right? Setting intentions, those kingdom principles, those beliefs that we are building our lives on, and we literally build our lives. So I'm so excited to teach you guys this. So let's. This is where you're gonna take in. All of your um, intentions, your moments matter, that moments matter method from yesterday. And we are going to use this while building out our rhythms. So oftentimes we begin these adventures of reconstructing or rebuilding or trying to figure out a new way to do things. And when we do that, we think that we just have to throw everything away. We just have to trash it all, right? And, and we have to wipe the slate completely clean and then start all over. Give me a hands or hand raise emoji or heart or something right now if you find yourself thinking that. Like, I just got to trash it all and start all over. Okay, I'll be right there to change it. She doesn't want the cartoon on anymore. <laughs> so, that happens to me, I know. That's happened to me in the past. And what happened was the Lord showed me this. He said, listen. And there are things that you are doing right now that is working and working well. And especially when we get into all this like time management, task management type of stuff with our families, right? We're like, we just got to throw it all away and build out a whole new schedule. Well, I stopped saying the word schedule a long time ago and it went to routine. And then from there, the Lord moved me from routine into rhythm because we all have rhythms of our lives. We all have rhythms in which we move and we live and we breathe and things flow in and out throughout our day. So see, be very careful. <laughs> She's over here about to climb up and sit at the table. So I'm like, don't knock stuff over. <laughs> so don't trash everything. Here's your fill in. Don't trash everything. Keep what works. So what you're going to do, <laughs> did you guys hear Siri? I think Siri was talking to me. <laughs> Don't trash everything. Keep, keep what works. Keep what works. Okay. So the easiest thing, what you need to do is, is write down, go through here and you're going to use your rhythm refinement worksheet. Print, print this page off twice if you need to. But we made it long ways. We've got morning, afternoon, evening, and bedtime. And you can write off things that are, like if all of your Monday through Friday mornings look the same, you can write that all in this one like block, okay? Don't feel like you have to write the same thing 12 different times. <laughs> There's not 12 days a week, but you get what I mean. Don't feel like you have to write the same thing over and over and over. Just like draw your line through it if you need to. But but write down your rhythms. Write down Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, right? Write down your rhythms because these are the rhythms of your days. These are the rhythms of your life. And what what you are going to do after you write down your rhythm, you are going to put a box around the parts and the pieces and the moments of your rhythm that work. Lucille, shush, we will clean it after. You're going to put a box around the moments and the rhythms that work because there are pieces of your, of your days, of your life that flow and that work well. Then you're gonna put a circle around the things that aren't working well. So you're going to put a box around the things that are, and you're going to put a circle around the things that aren't. And that's when you are going to start refining that rhythm that you have. So you're going to begin rewriting that and work it out. And here's just an example. 
so there's this thing that's big about family dinners, right? And psychology has shown over and over family dinners help, you know, support these natural cohesive bonds and families. And, and there's a lot of really good things that come from family dinners, right? And having this as a part of your day. Well, I got to feeling because I thought I should, right? I should, we should be having family dinners because that's what you should be doing. And I got to feeling really um, overwhelmed and burdened and really guilty because the fact is we just couldn't have family dinners, not with my husband's work schedule. And then the Lord showed me the point isn't the time frame. The point is that you're coming together. And he showed me that, hey, this morning rhythm that you guys have going on, it works. That's your point of your meals together, your time together, where you're sitting and you're eating and you're having conversations. You have your morning, you have breakfast together. You may not have dinner together as a whole family, but you have breakfast together. And so I wanna challenge you right now, mama, remove the shoulds. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, never done nothing. <laughs> remove the shoulds and really focus in on creating your empowered motherhood, creating your life, the function and the flow and the rhythm of your family. So write down the things, square around the things that work, circle around the things that don't, and then begin to upgrade. And this is where you're going to begin to work in your PAMs, okay? This is, oh, I forgot to bring bring that out for you. Um, okay, I'm pretty excited about doing this. Yay, Kelly, I'm so excited. Okay, when you guys do this, Take a picture of it and post it. And I would love for you guys, as you experience those like aha moments or you're doing some of this work and you're like, yes, okay, I'm getting it. Take your, or even if you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm getting it. Take your picture and post it over in our main Empowered Motherhood group and tell those moments that they need to get over here and, and do this too because it is important and it is good, solid work, okay? So definitely do that. It encourages others when, when they see what we're doing. Um, but remove those shoulds. Create the days that are designed for you and your family. And your family's different and it's gonna operate different and that's okay. There was one moment that I was having a conversation with and we're like, and she said, I know that we should, and I forgot exactly what she said, but she was talking about dinner. And she was talking about how she always feels so guilty when she tells, when people ask her, you know, what they do for dinner or how that works at their house. Because she's like, we eat at like four or five. We eat really early. And I start like prepping this at this time and all of this. And I'm like, Mama, listen, you're cooking dinner every night. Like you're literally cooking something, not just heating something up. And it doesn't matter what time you're eating. <laughs> like the, the whole shoulds are, are things that are expectations that others have put out there based on who knows what, but it's not based on what your life looks like and, and what God has for you. So stay in alignment, set those intentions, work those intentions into your rhythms Right, so example of that whole breakfast thing with, with us, harmony is my family intention, remember? So when we are entering into those morning rhythms, and I'm really lucky, y'all, my husband, like I told him yesterday, I said, you know, babe, I could do this on my own. Like I could get up every morning early, make sure everybody's ready to leave and get out the door. I could, but I'm so thankful that I don't. I'm not a morning person and my husband is and he like takes care he takes care of the boys so we've got like two sets of kids because we have a seven and a six-year-old and then we have well a now three-year-old and a one-year-old and so it's like since these last two were born he's just kind of like really taken over these two and it's been super amazing <laughs> and I'm like I'm so thankful and so even in that though we focus on harmony there are moments where I'm like I really want to stay in bed a little bit longer but I know that the intention that I have to operate with my family is harmony and if I choose to stay in bed instead of helping and creating this harmonious atmosphere this harmonious family then that is going against my intention and that's not what I want I'm creating those moments in those days so I hope that little extra makes sense we went over time today by just a little bit but I really wanted to help make sure that we understood our kingdom principle 
and those sacred cows and that we can just like throw those down, burn them and really step into what we know is true and that we get to seek God first in all things and everything that we do. And then we get to seek out other things because you guys, he has placed desires in our hearts and we, yes, there are, there are yucky desires and there are fleshly desires, but as we align ourselves with the Lord and we step into those empowerments, we don't have to worry about that anymore because it gets refined and cleansed and washed out of us. And we focus on those, those things that are in alignment with our empowered motherhood and who God has for us. And those desires are often good. They're often things that would help bring us into the purpose that we have in living with him and what he has for us. And so I'm really, really excited about this rhythm refinement. Let's do it. Start writing it down. And, um, okay. The Pams I'll come back at another time with your Pam because I really want to, um, make sure that you get equipped in all of the ways. I want you to be able to leave here with everything you need to create your empowered motherhood. So that means I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you about your aromatherapy method a little bit later, but start working in your PAMs. Start just marking off 5, 10, 20 minutes in your rhythm as you start refining that today. And then keep note of these happy mom hacks, right? Keep note of those. And then you'll be able to start inputting them in to your rhythm, okay? So I cannot wait to see what you guys do. Take pictures, post them. I want to hear from you. You guys have a great morning, and I'll see you back here in a few hours, 1130 for session two.